Clinton's, um, and, and maybe Mrs. Hatcher can help me with some of the other things that why Courtney thought we we worked on this a number of times but couldn't get that number back even to what we have in right now, and that's at the same tax rate of seventy two cents. Um, for and the personal property rate assumed to be Does it include the drop in personal property. Drop in personal property as well. So you can see how that affects us with overall taxes of about three cents uh, on a real estate rate. And I just multiply those out on the real estate rate so you can see right. what they're doing. That it was could the be point. fixed. It could be fixed and not be so bad if the personal property is made more equalized. Right. All right, there are two major uh, contributors to increases in expenditures. One is transfer to debt retirement. That's up $991,701, four cents on the tax rate. How that breaks down, you'll see, is general fund debts increasing by 118705 school fund debts increasing by 490665 for a total of those two of $609,361, or about 2.4 cents. Another issue in that is that in 13, there was some one-time monies available, 382000 there about, that were paid on that debt that aren't available for FY14. That was times when we had a project that we were finished and we didn't spend all that money, we gave the money back right away. Pay the, pay the debt down. Pay the debt down. The um, other big increase is transfer to utilities from $1,280,200 uh, $1, to $1,814,705. That's an increase of $534,505 or 2.16. Um, utility fund debts increasing by $95,499. Um, some of the other uh, costs for that are lower availability fees, uh, lowered uh, from FY13 to 14 projection by $306,000. We also had some revenue from use of money that we had, uh, have of 30000 in 13 that we don't anticipate having any in 14. Water uh, user fees, we expect those to be up $31,000. Um, so the, the total revenue is up about $23,000. Um, but you had some one-time monies uh, also in utilities that were paid toward debt last year of $205,393. So if you kind of come down the starting in the column, I didn't label it, three, minus 373 pennies, and then you add uh, 4 cent, 2.16 uh, cent, and you add those together with the negative number, it's 9.89 cents uh, that you're off on the tax rate by losing revenue and having those increased expenditures. Um, this chart shows 10.2 cents, which is just a little bit of growth in some other areas, uh, approximately $87,000 in expenses. So two big items in expenses are all the increase, along with almost four cents of loss of revenue, uh, generates what's on this page of 10.2 cent difference of revenues over expenditures. Remember, this is not budgeted. Over These the five-year plan. Over the first year of 14. Then it's not... So bad as you move down to 15, um, you're only you're you're off again because your revenues are still down. You haven't fixed a revenue issue. Um, your expenditures are still up, but not as bad. Your your debt retirement actually drops a little bit. Your transfer to utilities drops a little bit, as you can see if you can squint down to this size. Um, but you still need uh, approximately four cents uh, on the tax rate to get through that if you leave the revenues as low as they are. Um, and another two cent in 16, another two cent in 17, and then 18, you don't need anything. You finally caught up your debt services dropping. But that's if you leave the revenue, uh, personal property down, 25% down, and really very little growth in real estate uh, predicted uh, revenue. No new business growth is included in this. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to factor that in right. what it might be. Worst case scenario. But this is this is... Revenues at their worst, probably, you know, which we've probably seen in the last four or five years of revenues at their worst. But if they stay flat, this is where we are, and we haven't added any projects. The next thing on our agenda is the radio system. And we already did health insurance. So those are factored in, and more will factor in. But it just gives us an idea of what everything factored in is going to cost. If you move to page nine, that really is what... Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Oh, 
Yes, Mr. Anchors, go right ahead. Uh, looking back in the past five years, what kind of a tax increase have we experienced over the last five years? Do you know? Eight yes. cents. I don't recall. No, whatever. What was it before? Six, eight cents. Two, four. And we, it was eight cents in the last two years. Right. Four, we, didn't, we, didn't have, we didn't have, didn't have tax increase, increase in two years before that. No, yep. when, when Mr. Seeley got on the board, we had a tax increase that year. That's what I was thinking. Then we had two years, years of no tax increase. Then we increased it to last year. Excuse me? We increased the last two years. That's what I know. Yeah, but that's the end. We had, we had what are you, 2008, 2009. 2009, we had a tax increase. I think that was four or five cents. 11. You have that? Do you have it? We increased taxes when well, Jeff we, came on the board. We went six years without a reassessment. Right. All right. We lowered in, in the reassessment prior to the just one we just had a couple of years ago. The assessments were really high, and we lowered the tax rate to like 53 cents. Right. All right. Somewhere between that time, because it was six years, keep in mind it was six years ago that we did a reassessment. Five years. Five, five, five now. Yeah. Oh, we waited six years before we had one the last time, did we not? Five. five. We were supposed to do it four, four, and we did it in five. We did it in five. Yeah. Okay. But you're right. You're on the right track. Go, go ahead. I'm just saying we went 53, now we're at 72. Now, certainly that was an equalization into that where the rate the went up, but the revenue equalization was 64 go up. cents. All right. So we went from 53 to, to 64, 64 to equalize. That was equalized. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think we added a penny. At, I just didn't think we increased it that much. Yeah, we've we've done two four yeah, cent increases, one, cent one to sixty eight cents and one to seventy two cents. Those two fours have been the last two years. That's yes. Correct. Yeah. But we got from fifty three to two to. But we got fifty three to. I think that's equalization. Oh 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 oh. oh. Yeah, because I I wanted it was we wanted sixty seven. We were we were discussing sixty seven, sixty eight, and sixty nine because the schools wanted the extra money. That was when we did the equalization. We did add. Oh, well, no question we added it on the tax rate. Yeah. We had to do that in order to equalize it because it was such a reduction of 16 no, point we, something. No, we added after after we equalized, we went up. Yeah, a we couple went of from years. 64 to 68. Yeah, I right. think that's what it was. This does, not, this, this does not take consideration that there will be another reassessment done and hopefully that we've had a turnaround and that the economy has picked back up. It, it does. It just assumes that the tax rate would equalize down. Oh, okay. It doesn't, it does anticipate that we'll have more value on some of the businesses that have been built and um, houses that have been built and those type of things, but we assume that the, the tax rate would be equalized. So if we go back up to $3 billion, then the rate would drop back accordingly. Can you, can you do us, because um, I, I don't, I don't want to get kind of like totally overloaded, but, right, but page I want to do a lot. Do us page, page nine. nine. Page nine and page 11. Page nine kind of goes through. Gentlemen, the, we're going to do page nine, which just so you can see where we are. Um, we, what we try to do to add to this model work is you add various capital projects to show what those actually are in the per penny on the current rate. Um, obviously, we're working on the radio system. <coughs> well, we anticipate first payment due in FY15 based on arrears financing through Motorola and assume that a loan will be taken out maybe for a 15-year note financing before that first payment is due. Um, we do look at there may be some additional wells that we would need. We also have vehicle replacement of 10 sheriff's vehicles at 242000 funded by lease. Um, three vehicles paid by cash. Ten replacement school buses at 850000 funded by a lease. And one new fire truck, 500000 funded by a lease. So if you look at those debt service payments, the radio system uh, projected cost is actually down from the 6 9 um, but if you figure 6-9 as contingency, um, you're looking at uh, 2.5 uh, cent uh, equivalent tax rate at 4% interest over 15 years. Um, you've got your new wells. Sheriff's vehicles, uh, projected cost $1,092,000. Um, five to seven years animation, uh, annual payment $195,000. It's almost 8.8 of a penny. Um, and then the fire truck, $500,000, 10 years. It's about uh, 0.26 cents on a penny. And if we flip 
over to 11. 11 is. Um, some of our capital <coughs> improvement, other priority projects that have been on the capital improvement plan for a number of years. Um, and we just kind of slip down to sort of the bottom. Carolina High School um, has asked for uh, approximately 20 million, and I know this project's being discussed, but just to give you an idea of what that would look like, 3% interest, 20 year amortization is about a million three hundred thirty thousand dollar annual payment, which is five point three six cent. Madison Elementary three million um, point eight uh, three on the tax. Uh, utility water supply twenty million also is another five point five two. That's financed for thirty years. Um, uh, new ambulances, those type of things. But if you look at those big, big projects, uh, it's fairly significant tax uh, burden to fund those. And so with that. Um, I will answer any individual questions, so please email me, call me with your comments or any of the assumptions you'd like us to take a look at or maybe make a change to and, and see how the numbers work out. And again, we're just, we're just trying to get a first glimpse of this, and I, I know you probably, you know, had a chance to read it or look, look at it this weekend, still have some questions. Um, let's just forward those questions to Mr. Colley. As we work in the next month or two to get into the budget, we want to look at this a lot closer. I know none of these things that we talked about on page 9 and 11 have been approved yet. We'll probably do one of them tonight. But the others hadn't been approved. We hadn't talked about ways to fund other things. Just to see the impact when we talk about what we want to do, what the impact is. Okay. Any quick questions for Mr. Culley? At this time, I have no quick questions. I would just like to say that, that uh, I think we need to again say this is the worst case right. scenario, I, and yes. I don't want to scare people to death saying that hey, and people go out and say in five years we can expect a 28 cent increase in the real estate taxes, and that is just not that's not factual. I mean, let's let's be upfront. And you know, we have a proper fund that's going to help pay for some of these issues. That's not been included in as a revenue source. So so let's not you know. Let's not blow this thing out to the point where it just scares everybody in the county to death, and uh, because it's just not a it's not a fair a fair picture of, of what the entire cost is. Okay. Well, again, it is our it is our, our first pass. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Yeah, I just I just have one. We had I, and I, I think Miss Lewis brought up a point too. I mean, and I'm not trying to pick on the model here about the uh, you know the YMCA is not included in this. And Mr. Akers, you said that that would the capital project it was as it came along, that would but the money raised would be put on the website. Is that is that correct? So that we could, we could have some understanding of, of right. that note being paid off in in what 20, 2017? I think it's fifteen or sixteen. Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. Yeah. Uh, I will talk to the committee okay. about this. Uh, I know that there are some uh, people that are are trying to make this into a negative as far as the capital. I will talk to the committee and see what they want to do with this. And if they have no problem, maybe I have no problem. But uh, there are some people that want to just use these numbers to try to bash uh, the, the YMCA. Uh, there has been money collected. Uh, there's continuing money to be collected. Mm -hmm. uh, we're making presentations to uh, uh, foundations. So I guess the point is, at the end of the day, if we haven't raised it, then people can and complain and say, hey, you didn't do what you said you were going to do. Uh, and so, but again, we will, uh, I'll talk to the committee. And there is a, a capital campaign committee. Uh, and we're looking at doing, doing several things uh, as to how that's going to be established. Okay. okay. Thank you. You bet. Uh, I would just, just add that where is this, all this is very good, but I can tell you schools are going to be right back here. And they're going to be expecting us to come up with ways to to fund their needs, and and law enforcement and fire and rescue and and all the other entities that we that we serve. Um, and uh, again, there are just a lot of uh, things that are still to be added uh, because the need is not going away. That's all I got. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Um, since we've gone through all of this, let's take about a 10-minute break, and then we'll get to the radio system. 10-minute real time. Well, 10-minute supervisor time, so we'll be back at 10 o'clock.
which is really 15 minutes. We got the radio system and text amendments, and that's it. Okay. So we'll break for uh, 15 minutes. We'll be back at 10. The January 22nd meeting of the Caroline County Board of Supervisors. Our next agenda item is agenda item number seven, uh, which is the selection of public radio system. And give me one second. So. Who's, who's going to do this, Mr. Parton? No. You're going to do it? Okay, yes, sir. Before you start, um, we have actually gotten estimates for the new radio system down from initial uh, cost estimate of $10.3 million down to $6.5 million. Um, so I wanted to say congratulations to the staff for all their work, Mr. Parton, Mr. Satterwhite from the schools, the sheriff's office, uh, fire and rescue the chief, and thank those additional uh, folks who provided us information and direction, including Mr. Bean, who's here, and Mr. Duncan, who've uh, worked with it. And you'll notice in this, we have possibly mobile broadband hotspots. So <clears throat> with a little bit of extra work, we may be able to get some extra internet connections out there in the county. And I think that was what I wanted to start with. Mr. Cully, you want to summarize, and then we'll Make yes, a decision. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, thank you. <clears throat> At your place, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I put a copy of an email I received uh, this evening um, after we, had, we got to the meeting. We were waiting for it all afternoon, but I did get the fire chief to print that up for you um, from our consultant, David Munez. Um, but, but before you get to that, I want you to know that was at your place in case you covered it up. Um, uh, we were instructed uh, after our work session in November to explore uh, all options. Uh, Include Spotsylvania and uh, Hanover um, to make sure that we were we were looking at everything and doing it as uh, cost effective as possible. Uh, Mr. Parton and I did go over to Spotsylvania on November 28th to discuss the possibility. After having emailed them uh, uh, some of our concerns and questions um, during that meeting, we emphasized our our need to know what the user fees might be that Spotsylvania would charge us and um, the, the timeliness of it. We knew that uh, we were under the FCC mandate. Spotsylvania is not. They're on 800, and uh, they're not under the narrow banding of the VHF band. Um, so we've been uh, waiting uh, since then, some other communications with them, both by phone and by email. Um, and they have not finished their contract. And as you see by the email, it's probably still maybe another month to six weeks away before um, they'll be under contract with Harris. Um, we didn't have any direct uh, discussion with Harris, because obviously we were in uh, negotiation with Motorola. Um, we did ask that. They could provide some engineering information to our consultant, um, and, and as of this time, we still do not have that. Um, and this email that I got from his, uh, Mr. Munoz believes that with his discussions that he just had last week with uh, AECOM, that it, the proposal will be basically like what uh, the Hanover proposal is that we want to talk to you about tonight, which is basically leasing space on existing Hanover towers um, and, and leasing space in two existing Hanover buildings. Um, at their sites using their generators, their electricity, and just paying <clears throat> basically tile rent to be on and, and not really be part of Hanover system, just use some space that's available on two sites. Um, so that's uh, what we've explored. One of the things that we've, uh, because it came available, is to be able to buy refurbished radios. They'll still have the warranty for a year and be able to have additional uh, warranties purchased on the radios. They'll have new cases. Um, and be reprogrammed to the Caroline system, but at a substantial saving of approximately $185,914. Um, if we reduce the tower sites from seven to six and use two of those sites in Hanover, that would be using a tower at Dawn, which is right over uh, the line there from the county, and then one in Beaverdam, that would also uh, reduce the initial cost by $1,478,394. Um, so that uh, gets us down to a six-site standalone trunk system, um, completely TDA compliant, which means it does meet the 2017 narrowband <coughs> mandate for 700. So out of the out of the box, the system will be compliant with the t uh, 2017 uh, standards um, at a cost of approximately six million five hundred six thousand six hundred fifty-four dollars in capital dollars. Um, we did receive, since our, our meeting, a, a letter you should have a copy of and may be uh, in the packet from the FCC that they gave us six packet. months. Uh, we asked for two years. Um, they gave us six months with um, uh, uh, 
that nobody's been given anything longer than uh, December 31st of 2013. They didn't know what they were going to do for 14, but that if we wanted to be, go beyond that, we were going to have to be uh, subject to a lot of scrutiny and additional uh, oversight and detail. Um, we do know that it's approximately a uh, year to 18 months to, to get a new system installed if we started on it tomorrow. So we don't feel that we are at a point in time where we can continue to wait um, to negotiate uh, pretty much the same cost that we can get with Hanover. Um, we believe, and the committee believes, that uh, we've gotten the cost down about as low as we can. Um, we do have, um, at no cost, uh, a hot spot on each tower that will be tied back to the Internet, which can be the basis for then us to maybe apply for some broadband grants and then further expand those hot spots out into some areas. Um, so it does provide some Internet backbone capability. Um, we will continue to work to, uh, if given the opportunity, to uh, negotiate a contract with Motorola, is what we're asking for tonight, um, to bring back to you a, a, a firm number um, and to lower those costs even further, if at all possible, if there are some other options out that uh, come to light. All right. Questions for Mr. Kelly? Yeah, I've, Mr. Kelly, I've got a couple. Um, and what kind of playing off what Mr. Thomas said about the broadband, does that give us an opportunity, do those grants give us an opportunity to play for, uh, pay for some of the infrastructure, or is it just? Um, that would be for additional, additional. I don't think it would be anything that would pay for what, we, what we're putting in with the radio system, but I believe okay. that the grants would be available if we needed to stick another pole up and then be able to hop the signals around, because that's a wireless, right, right, yeah, you know, right, you need yeah, to try to move in this. We try to do something like that in Landor before we got to Comcast, okay. So, all right, I appreciate that. And can you just uh, go over for the people of the county? I know this is a this is a mandate from this is something that we have to do from the feds. I mean, this that is, is something cool. that we don't have a choice in doing. I mean, we're, you know, this is there's no choice here. But what is we can't keep the existing system. What is the benefit from this system that we will be adopting over the I mean, <coughs> basically the current system? The, the current system. To give you a little history. Uh, that we, that we presented in, in November was uh, constructed in 1993. Um, on the portable radio side, it covers about 42 percent of the county. On the mobile, uh, about 78 to 80 percent uh, in VHF. VHF. And uh, with that, uh, if we have to narrowband that VHF, um, we would lose about three decibels or, or, or more, so the portable coverage would be about 30. 9% and then the mobile will be, uh, you know, less than what, by three. Um, it's basically a one tower site with five receive sites. Um, it has a tremendous amount of interference on the system already. If you uh, narrow band it, uh, you're going to have additional issues with uh, interference. Um, if you go standalone VHF and put up a simulcast system throughout the county, it would be a five to six tower system. Um, and there again, you're still limited to four channels. Um, we would pretty much have to remove the schools off of the system to make it uh, enough channel capacity for public uh, fire and, and sheriff's uh, operations. Um, so we'd have to look at some other type of system for the schools and the school buses, and the board didn't, didn't think that was a way to go. So we also looked at UHF, but we weren't able to find any UHF frequencies. Um, the cost of that was about $6.7 million. And that was a bid price on UHF from both Harris and Motorola, and the Harris price was even more. Um, uh, so from that, those are your basic options. Stay VHF and narrowband in place and make a system that's inadequate today more inadequate. Um, go to VHF simulcast, but be limited in frequencies and be dealing with the same amount or more of uh, interference and really no growth path. Um, move to UHF, no frequencies, or move to 700. Um, where that is a public safety band setup. It's, uh, it's governed by uh, uh, a board that issues the frequencies. It has all kinds of standards for the frequencies to prevent interference. Um, something 42, I don't remember the, the, the name of that group right offhand, but it's sort of like Region 42 that, that we have to, we have been allocated frequencies, so we have them, but we have to comply with their rules and, and and regulations as far as uh, how we use those frequencies and how we broadcast those frequencies out so that we don't interfere with anybody else, that, uh, that type of thing. So it's, it's pretty much a, a public safety grade radio system in the public safety frequency band as opposed to VHF, which had radio and television and, you know, private uh, 
business radios and everybody and his brother and nobody really thought out or planned for interference as it got crowded. Is it like an overstatement? And I'm, I'm sure George will tell us if it is, but the old cell phones we used to have, like seven or eight years ago, the, the analog phones that were scratchy and you could hear them, that's kind of what they are now. And then we'll all go to digital phones, which are clearer and better reception and longer range. Is that a, is that a good analogy? Kind of sort of, okay. Yeah. So the benefit to the county is better coordination when there are fire police sites. Um, school buses will be on the system. I was at the landfill years ago, a couple of years ago, it wasn't that long. There was a fire at the landfill. The, 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 the chief at the time was talking on one radio and relaying signals on another radio, so we should eliminate that kind of thing. So it's, it's going to allow for better public safety access, which is really the key. Mr. Seeley? I guess I'm still curious, with what we're saying tonight is if we go forward, you're going to negotiate with Motorola. Does that mean we can't negotiate with anybody else until that's finished? But when that's finished, we could negotiate with somebody else. You'd have to throw out that, you have to throw them out and say, this, we're not going to, we can't come to agreement with you. We're, we're starting with uh, the second vendor that was in the RFP. And I but guess you can't I'm, bid them against each other. Right. I guess where I'm going is Spotsylvania covers a tremendous amount of the part of the county that we have issues with now. The whole western side of the county where Spotsylvania's towers are concentrated. And partnering with them makes more sense because they cover more of our population that, that's got tough coverage now because of the topology over there with the, the bowl shapes in both those lakes. And, and I'm still really curious how we're going to have that coverage because we don't we don't do a good job now with it. And I'm still kind of curious where Spotsylvania is going to be in the whole lease, you know, per cost, per radio, whatever it was that, that, that Hanover was going to do that we still, I don't think, have resolved. We, we've resolved that with Hanover. We're not going to take that approach. We're going to rent in their, in their buildings and put our own equipment in and put our own antenna up in our own system. We're just renting building space and tower space on two sites so that we don't have to put uh, the buildings, the generator, the construction of that and, and stuff in. Maintenance building and all that. Negotiation. Right. And so yeah, we'll, we'll be still have rent. to do that on the west side of the county, correct? No, that would be the ones we'll replace will be on the west side. And Motorola will guarantee the coverage at 92%, uh, 95% of the time in that. And that's on talk out. Talk in will be fine. And the talk out from the towers um, can only be so strong because it goes back to that region 42. Um, we may be able to be better than that if region 42 will let us adjust some things, but based on the maps that they've been able to provide. Um, so it's a standalone system. When you start riding on somebody else's system, whether it's Hanover's or Spotsylvania, there's a, a, a grade of service concern for both of those counties, and that's what's in this email that um, the consultant has advised our consultant that he believes that um, it would be a similar situation of we would be at their tower sites with our own equipment. So the, the cost differential is not really that much difference, and it's not spillover coverage. Their consultant's not considering using spillover coverage into, uh, into Carolina any more than Hanover was really majorly interested in that because of the quality of service, the grade of service concerns they have. And then if you're going to be on that, that's when then you're, you have to start paying those user fees because you're using their system. They've got debt involved in their system, and you're a user on the system, so you're paying a, a whole lot higher price. We asked Spotsylvania in, in November, November 28th. This is one of the things that is a key to knowing whether we can partner. Is you've got to be able to tell me, are you going to charge me a, a rent per subscriber because we have 519 subscribers, I think, or are you going to charge me just a yearly fee, a monthly fee? How, what do you, what do you, I don't know that answer today, and that was November 28th. So they don't know because they haven't been able to tell me. And so Hanover did say... We've got to negotiate that rent for on the tower, but what they see is as a user on the tower and rent is more in line with uh, you know twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a year rent, which is what you'd pay if you were co-locating on a tower to begin with, which is a whole lot less uh, costly than paying per radio per year. Yeah, but I thought all those towers had free for public safety on them. 
they do for uh, one spot, and we're investigating that and working uh, with Mr. Fincham on how much, how many additional spots, because you've got to have <coughs> multiple things up there, including a, a microwave dish. And so, you know, they, I don't know exactly what those public safety spots include. With you talking and, about the towers in currently the we county? Can't. Yeah. Not the ones outside the well, county. We don't have all those outside. towers have public use built into them when they put them up. These are Hanover oh, owned only, towers. Yeah. Only the only the ones we did after a certain time because we put yeah. up a few towers. The towers were actually permitted by right in the county up until the mid nineties. Right. Okay. So you have a bunch of towers in the county that predate any type of regulation whatsoever. Exactly. And then it's we started only probably them. the last half dozen towers that have were installed under the model ordinance from the national Telecommunications Act, mm -hmm. uh, where we actually have, uh, as a standard uh, and a condition, uh, space for a tower site and ground site. But Mr. Thomas alluded to the issue, it's not a single site on the tower. In some cases, it's, what, four, four. So four sites, I believe, which was not contemplated under the ordinance. When so we, probably we, only about a third of all the towers in the county is there an ability f uh, through regulation for us to have a, a site reserved on the ground and on the tower. Right, because right, we didn't have them all like that. We did a whole bunch of towers that were just, just phone, you know, relay spots. Then we started, as Mr. Fincham said, I think it was the late 90s. We got an ordinance. One of the times we went to VACO, we went to VACO and they gave us the idea of the, the ordinance for towers so, so you get one. And using that, we, we made that a you know, county policy. So yeah, we got one spot. So are we, do we have to then pay all the engineering fees for the tower for extra additional site for wind and weight? All of that would have to be. Uh, engineered for every place we would want to put a microwave dish or a tower on anybody's tower. I think even the ones that you might have proffer in, there's got to be a wind load study for the amount of stuff that you're putting on on that structure. So that's all part of what's got to be done. We're currently paying rent to towers in the county for the re received sites that are out there, those five sites that exist out there away from the Bowling Green site. Okay. Mr. Underwood? Good, Mr. Akers. You good, Mr. Taylor. All right. So, what you would like us to do is to authorize staff to enter into contract negotiations with Motorola, and you expect those contract negotiations to probably take 30, 60 days, somewhere in that time frame. Hopefully, a month or so. But yeah. Okay. And according to the letter, the board has in its packet a letter from the uh, FCC and. Discussing all the leeway we have, which is none. So we basically, we basically have to show them uh, significant progress by in six months, and then after that, they won't give us any extensions past December 31st without significant progress. So are we agreeing tonight that we're going to spend $6.5 million? No, I'm going to bring the contract back to no. you to vote on. We're, we're agreeing tonight, we're agreeing tonight to let them negotiate a contract with Motorola. Since the Motorola representative is in the audience, I'm sure that it will come back much under the price Mr. Cully has given us. And then when they bring the contract back, we will have a discussion to negotiate the final price and how we pay for it. So we're just saying tonight, go ahead and negotiate with Motorola and get it back down to two and a half minutes. Oh, okay, I don't, want to, I don't want to have a stroke, but get it down to some number that's a little bit better than that, and then we'll go from there. Okay? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman I make a motion that we uh, allow staff to uh, negotiate a contract uh, with Motorola and report back within 30 to 60 days. Okay. Motion made by Mr. Akers. Is there a second to the motion to authorize staff to negotiate our contract with the selected vendor, which was Motorola. I second. 
Second made by Mr. Taylor. Motion made by, made by Mr. Aker, second by Mr. Taylor. Is there discussion on the motion? On readiness. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. Motion carries unanimously. We will um, move to agenda item number eight. Do I really have to do number eight? Mr. Black, do you have any issues with number eight right now? Okay, this was a continued first reading and then bring it to public hearing. Anybody have any problem with what's there? It affects you mostly. It affects you a little bit because Fort Tobago Bay was listed too. Yeah. All right, we don't have any problem. We're going to put that on the March, uh, March 25th, I think I saw. Okay, so you're good there. All right, Mr. Emerson. Do I, can I talk about number nine in person, I mean in public? Um, well, yes, sir, if we don't want to get into too much detail, all we really want to do is um, through sort of a miscommunication um, uh, and, the, and the fact that because of the holiday, I had to get a board agenda and pack it out quickly. The, um, That's no a resolution, <laughs> but a resolution for condemning um, a little bit of property that we need for the uh, well lot to expand the well lot for a buffer area um, at the days in site. Um, oh, anyway, a condemnation resolution was put on the consent agenda and then had to be taken off. And the reason it was taken off is because we have to have a public hearing first. So what we'd like you guys to do tonight is to authorize the public hearing on that resolution, which could be held at the next meeting because we only have to advertise it one time. Okay. And um, and then we can, you know, we can move forward. The first forward. meeting in February is the 8th? Um, 12th. 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 Oh, it gives us plenty of time. Okay. Okay. Any problem with that? We're going to authorize staff to do that. Do you need a motion that effect? You'd feel better if you got a motion? Yeah, yeah please. Okay. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Taylor. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. So we'll put that on the consent agenda. And we'll go from there. Okay. Mr. Cully. It's that time. Here we are. Um, on the 31st of January, we have a legislative day in Richmond. For those of you that are going. I didn't sign up. Okay, that's what I just, just heard. But we do have that. That's right. And then, oh, okay. And then remember, we added the extra board meeting. So we have two board meetings in, in February. Two board meetings so in February. Really the only things we have scheduled uh, as far as calendar items at this time. Okay. And the board meeting in February is to, 26th of February is to talk to the town of Port Royal about their boundary adjustment mm -hmm. and their real issue is water. So I thought it was a good idea if we have Mr. Sheeble come and give us county water uh, discussions where, where we are. You'll notice in the five-year plan there was a county water expansion that's going to be proposed, so we can talk about those sort of things. And what else did we add uh, from the end of February? That was it? We just added some tonight. Oh, uh, we had talked about going to visit the Fort Royal Museum. Yeah, but that's not what we added tonight. Well, we, we didn't add that on there, but, but we need to I figure out a day. Saying, on a day to go. Is that a good day to do it since we're going to be meeting anyway? Just if, if the board could meet a little bit early to go down and do that. If that's open on Sunday. I saw her there Sunday. I, I don't want to impose on your Sunday. Are we, are we having the meeting here or is it going to be at Fort Royal? We were going to have the meeting here. Port Royal, and be here to give Mr. Shebel the opportunity to bring all his data to here. Would it be both feasible to move the meeting to Port Royal and look at the um, well, museum down there? I mean, I think they're two different things. I, I think well, Port Royal is coming to us to ask for something. Right, but I was just saying that the majority of our meeting yeah. is, is with oh, oh, them. Oh, no, I mean, no. We do have, um, we have Farm Bureau in Port Royal. Which is March. You need to schedule a date. That's perfect. Farm, Farm Bureau is at the Port Royal uh, Fire, Fire. Firehouse. Yeah. So we can do Farm Bureau in March and then tour yeah. the at the same, the same time. time. That's okay, perfect. that's fine. We can do it then. That'll okay, what's good. the third thing we added? Well, we got, a, we got a, a meeting and a half to figure out the third thing we added. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that later. All right. So that was it, Mr. Coley? You're done? Yes, sir. That was enough talking. All right, 1028.
Closing board comments, Mr. Black. Uh, just well, like I said, opening board polar bear plunge February second, Lake Landor. Don't look for me anywhere was cold. <laughs> Mr. Thiele. I have nothing. Mr. Underwood. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Akers. No, sir. No comments. Mr. Taylor. I have none. All right. Gentlemen, we did a lot of work today. I appreciate your help and all of the things from the staff. So uh, that's it. One thing we do have is the a letter from Baycorp or somebody. There's a, there's a bill in the House. I sent it to you today. House Bill 1401 from Delegate Cole that would prevent lo local treasurers from collecting delinquent real estate taxes. On the primary residence. So, if there is if there is such a bill, but it was, he was, he was. Yeah. So okay, um, I think that's it. I want to stay longer. Motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion made by Mr. Underwood, seconded by Mr. Taylor. All in favor say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned.